Hey, Apo students, in this video, I'm going to share with you a few examples of what your essay should look like. So this is the bare minimum, but sometimes it helps to visualize the way things that look and color code them and so forth. I know I was a very visual type of a learner. So let's see if this makes some sense. So to start off with, in any APUSH essay, you want to begin with your contextualization about three good sentences. The College Board says you don't earn this point if you are too vague or too broad, so you want to be very specific. Use some sort of a key term but or to kind of qualify what you're talking about. But in your first three sentences in your introduction, you're giving me the background info to the prompt. So if it's about World War II, you probably don't need to be giving me information that's from like 1850. So you want to leave um, some room in there, but you want to make it about, let's say, 20 years prior or so, 10 to 20 years prior, setting the stage for World War II. And then you need to move on to your thesis statement, one or more sentences in the intro or the conclusion. I always look for three things in a great thesis statement. Does it answer the prompt? Does it take a position? Does it present categories? of analysis as well. One thing to keep in mind is your conclusion. You can actually put your thesis statement in your conclusion, but what I would do for the, in this situation is let's say you are writing the LEQ on the real AP exam and you're running out of time. If you feel kind of shaky, a little bit iffy about your thesis statement, try placing it in the conclusion at the very end if you have the time to do so and really kind of reaffirm, maybe restate it in some sort of a way, because I know that potentially you can get the credit at the very end of your essay if you kind of tighten up your thesis in that sort of a way. So what do you do next? In your three body paragraphs, you want to start with your first sentence um, being your topic sentence. What I mean by that is it introduces the topic of the paragraph, but it ties back to the thesis. So in category B, let's say if you're talking about the, the economics of World War II, well, then that tells me paragraph two right here, you're going to be talking about the economy of the, of the United States during World War II. So you're tying that back into your thesis statement to support whatever you mentioned in your categories of analysis. You do the same thing for paragraph one and paragraph three as well. So you're tying them back to your categories that you mentioned in your thesis statement as well. So if you can, try and make it argumentative. This is a little bit tough for students, I've found as in what is the most important cause of World War I. You might argue that in paragraph one. You might say that the, the chain of alliances prior to World War I was the most significant cause of the war. And then you might argue that in your first paragraph. That's topic sentence. Next, you want to sprinkle specific factual information throughout your essay. I always encourage my students to shoot for three to five key terms or pieces of SFI per paragraph. Essentially, I'm trying to get them credit for bringing in outside information or additional evidence. Um, and this is especially important in your document-based question as well. But if you can do this about three to five key terms somewhere in that window, with as many, if you can back up your, your paragraphs with many examples and many pieces of evidence, you're going to have a great essay. Additionally, you need to go beyond just describing evidence and just tell me what something is. I'm searching for you to use something called interpretive commentary. You'd see it right there in purple, but you could sprinkle that throughout your, your essay as well. We're going beyond describing what an event in history was or what a key term was. You're showing how and why it answers the problem. You, many students in World War I could tell me what the Treaty of Versailles is. But I'm looking at its impact, how and why it mattered in the sense of maybe um, creating a rising dictatorships throughout Europe, and, but especially over in Germany as well. So you're showing how and why it's important, not just describing what it is. The final thing that you need to do in your essay is present a clincher sentence, a sentence that reaffirms the claim basically saying here's why I'm correct and ties it directly back to the thesis um, statement at the very beginning of your essay as well. So you want to end in a nice way that kind of transitions from paragraph one to paragraph two and then from two to three kind of ending up.
And then finally, your conclusion, especially on an LEQ. If you get there, that is wonderful. If you don't, then it's still okay because you don't get a point for doing an amazing conclusion. But as mentioned earlier, if you feel a little bit shaky about your thesis statement to begin off with, here's your opportunity to go back and try and reclaim that point or go back and really reaffirm what you the point you were trying to make in the first place at the very end. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you still have some questions. Thanks for watching.